Hello and welcome to the Game Dev Outpost. In this video, we're going to talk about interfaces and shared communication between blueprints. Now, there's many different ways that we can communicate between blueprints, but interfaces are one of the most common and one of the most efficient ways of doing so. Now, interfaces come in two different forms. We have events and we have functions. So the best way to think about it is if a bunch of people have a cell phone and you make a group call and you call each one of them, they're all going to do something. That's events. Functions are when you do a group call and you talk to those people, they do something with what you said, and then they talk back to you. They send that information back to you. So let's get into some examples. I'm going to create a new blueprint that we want to talk to. So I'm going to make a blueprint class from actor and we will just call this BP spawner observer and we'll open that up. Now the next thing that we need is we need an interface. So I'm going to go to my content drawer and I'm going to right click and we're going to go to blueprint, blueprint interface. And we'll just call this BPI talk and we'll open this up. Now this isn't too dissimilar to any other blueprints, but the first thing you'll notice is that we have a function name and we can give this a name. We will call this spawn. And in our viewport, you'll notice we can't do anything. There's nothing that we can do here. This is by design. This as it stands is going to be used as an event. This function is going to be used as an event. So we'll hit compile and save. And now we'll go over to our BP spawner observer spawner observer. And now we want to add this interface so that it can be talked to. So in your class settings, we want to go to the details panel and we're going to see interfaces and you'll see implemented interfaces. We need to add this interface so that we can use that function. So we're going to look for our interface that we made BPI talk and right away on the left hand side under your blueprint information, you'll see interfaces and we have spawn. That's our function. The other thing we'll notice is that this is a gold color. This indicates that it is an event. So in our event graph, we want to add this spawn event. You can right click and choose implement event, or you can just double click and it will implement the event. So now when we call this, we can do something with this. So let's set this up and we'll do a print string and we will make this say hi from spawner. We'll hit compile and save. Now we need a way to call this event. So I'm going to use the third person character. And what's nice is you don't have to implement the interface in anything else. You can just call it. We're going to call it as a message. So if we right click and we look for spawn, we'll see under class BPI talk, we'll see spawn message. Now we have to do something with this. We still need a way to communicate directly to that observer. So we need to trigger some sort of event to begin with. So I'm going to do this off of a key. I'm going to do it off of the F key. So I'll get a key and I will set this to F. And now once we compile and save, we, we have an event to call this function to call the event in the spawner, but we need a target. So let's take a little detour and talk about a few different ways that we can get our target. What is the actor that we're trying to talk to? So we can do this with overlap events, right? We can say overlap, we can say get overlapping actors, and we can do this based on collision. We could do a line trace or any, tra any trace in general. And in these traces, we can break our hit result. We can split the struct pin or break it. And in here, we will get our hit actor. So this is one way to get a reference. And one of the most simple, but not always desirable ways is to get all actors of class. So we will get our 
BP spawner. And we will do a for each loop on this. And we will promote the array element to our actor. And when this is completed, we will call our spawn and our target will be our actor. So now let's go ahead and compile and save this and drag out our BP sonar spawner. And we will also go ahead and drag out our BP third person. In my case, I need to change the possession to be player zero. And now when I hit play, we get our character. And if we hit F on the keyboard, we get our high from spawner. So to recap here, in order to use the interfaces, whether it be an event or a function, you still need to get a reference to the actor that you wanna call this on. Another way that we could do this is instead, we could get all actors with interface and we can say BPI, BPI talk. And now this will be our for loop, but we need a new for loop here. So we'll do a for loop and we will plug this. Uh, we gotta change it now. So now we need to change the actor. We'll promote this to variable. This is our actor. We will set it. And once it's set, we'll spawn based on this actor. Compile, save. And if we go and play, we hit F on the keyboard, high from spawner. So there's many different ways that we can get our actor reference. So ultimately, we are calling this message and we're finding out what actors have the interface. And then in the BP spawner, the event is being called and we're printing the string. Now let's expand on this a little bit. We can pass a little more information if we wanted to. So in the BPI talk, we can add, we can add an input and we can add outputs. Let's do an input first. So we will add a new one and we will make this a string. And we'll just say, hey, that's just the name of the variable and we'll compile and save. And now in our BP third person, you can see that there's some input here. So this is something that we want to send to the actors that are implementing that in interface. In the string, we're going to say, let's do, let's do self, get a reference to self, and we will put the display name in here. So we get that, right? And we're going to send that to our spawner. And now from the spawner, we're going to append and we'll leave a space here and we will add and we'll say says hi to add space add and we'll get a reference to self here, right? And we will get the display name, drop it down and we'll plug this in. So we can pass information from whoever's sending the message. So we'll compile and save and we'll go ahead and hit play. If we hit F on our keyboard, our third person character says hi to the spawner. So let's expand on our interface event a little bit. Say I actually wanted to spawn a bunch of things. What I can do is in our spawner, we can now say, when this happens, I want to spawn an actor, right? So I'm going to spawn an actor from class and let's go ahead and create a new class really quick. We will just call this, we'll make this from an actor and we will call this BP thingy. We'll open that up. And all we're gonna do is just add a static mesh to this, right? So we have our static mesh and we will make this a sphere, arcade sphere. Um, 
something a little smaller. Control reg sphere. We'll use that one and we'll save. And now in our spawner, we are going to spawn that class that we made. So BP thingy, this is our sphere. And now we want to spawn this based on the player's location. So we can get player character, right? Our third person is a lower class to character and we can get actor location and we're actually going to split this because we don't want these to spawn inside of the character. We want these to spawn above the character. So we are going to, on the Z, we're going to add, and we're going to add 200 units, two meters. And now we are going to recombine these. So we will make vector, and we will split our transform, and we're going to plug this into our location. Compile, save, and we'll hit play. And now every time we hit F on the keyboard, we're going to spawn a sphere. Now, just the same, if we wanted to, we could pass the transform information. So in our BPI talk, our interface, on our spawn function, we could add a new input and we could create this as a vector or a transform. We'll do a transform. Let's do that. And we will just call this uh, transform, right? And we will compile and save. And now in our BP third person, we have this transform. So if we wanted, we can pass in our transform from here. So we're going to go ahead and get actor location, the target to self, and we're going to split this struct. So we just have the location. And now we're just gonna go ahead and copy what we made before. So we'll split the location and we'll paste these and we'll hook them back up. Our Z goes down here, our Y goes here and our X here and we'll just plug this into transform location. And now we can compile and save. And in our spawner, now we have that transform. We can just use the transform that way. So it can work this way, or you could also just pass it in. So I'm gonna clear all of this out, and I'm going to split the transform from the event, and I will just plug the location directly in. And we'll compile and save. And now let's go take a look at that. So we'll hit play and we will hit F and we get the same thing. All right, so all of that was interfaces as an event. Now let's talk about interfaces as functions. The example that I gave was you make a phone call to a whole bunch of people and those people take in the information that you said, make some changes, and then they send it back to you. So. Let's go ahead and make a new interface function. We're going to look at our BPI talk and we're going to add a new function. And we'll call this talkback. Now the difference between events and functions are actually really small. But if you wanna add an output, this now becomes a function because it's going to be able to return something, right? So we will make this a string and we will just call this uh, return, and we will add an input, and we will call this talk, and actually let's call this other one talking back, and we will compile and save. And now if we go back to our BP spawner, we're going to see that we have the spawn function, but we also have the talkback function, right? The gold means that it's an event, and the gray means that this is a function. So how do we use this now? We could just drag this out and we'll see it like that. But the key here is that anything that's implementing this interface, you can add its own functionality to the function. So if we double click on the talkback, we can add things in here. We can actually customize it. So in here, we're going to do our append. 
So we're actually going to take all of this out, right? We'll just cut this. We'll go back to our talkback. We'll paste this here. And we're going to say, whoever's talking to us says hi to us. And we'll plug this in and we'll hit compile and save. We'll just look at our event graph here. So we can still print and we can still spawn. We'll take this print out for now. We'll get rid of that, compile and save. And now let's look at our third person character. So all we need to do is call that function. So if we right click and we look for talkback, talkback message, we can use this as it is, right? So we'll just plug this in after the spawn and we will get a reference to our actor that we're finding in the talk, we're going to get the reference to ourself. We'll just plug that in. And then it's going to go through that function and we're going to print it. So let's print this to the screen. Just print this and we will compile and save. Let's go and play. And we'll hit F on the keyboard. And we get a similar result. Our third person character is talking to the spawner. But it's more complicated, right? We have this function set up from our spawner in the talkback, right? Our talkback function in the spawner. And we're utilizing that in our third person character. Now, it's a convenient feature because you go ahead and make a bunch of other actors that use that talkback function but you can implement its own use case, right? Bob is going to do something different than Sally might. All right, guys, if you thought this video was useful and it helped, please let me know by commenting down below and liking the video. Thanks, guys.